G'day guys, I'm Jake. Welcome back to the Journey Van High S Conversion. In today's video, I want to talk to you everything about insulating your high S. Oh, Loki. Hey, buddy. Insulation plays a really important role in every camper van, and it's also a really hotly debated topic among van lifers as well. So I want to run through the two main roles that insulation play in your van, talk about a couple of the options for material that you might consider, including why I went with the closed cell foam. Let's get stuck in. The first critical role that insulation plays in your van is protecting you from the outside elements, keeping you nice and cozy by creating a thermal barrier. The second important role that your insulation is going to play, and the reason it is such a hotly debated topic, is how it prevents condensation from forming behind your van walls. When I first started researching insulation, my approach was to just go find whatever material that had the best thermal properties and then shove that in my walls and be done. I pretty quickly realized that where insulation becomes more complicated than that is with condensation. The way that I sort of explain this to myself to keep it nice and simple is that condensation occurs when a surface is cold relative to the amount of moisture that's in the air coming into contact with it. What that means is there are three ways to prevent condensation from forming or to ensure that as little condensation forms as possible. The first method would be to completely prevent the moisture filled air from coming into contact with the cool surface at all. That's what's commonly referred to as a vapor barrier. It's typically not recommended that DIYers take them on because they are notoriously easy to stuff up. If you miss something and there is a little hole somewhere, it can still allow condensation to form, but then stop the air from being able to flow during the day and allow that moisture to be released again, making matters worse. So typically creating a vapor barrier isn't recommended to DIYers except for perhaps with spray foam, which I'll talk about in a minute. The second way you can help prevent condensation from forming in your van is by reducing the amount of moisture that's in the air of your van. In my opinion, this is the secret weapon to preventing condensation in any camper van, and it's primarily by using a roof vent or a roof fan. I absolutely love my Max Air fans. I think it's an absolute must for any van, actually. Even if I was doing a budget conversion, it's one of the first things I would spend money on. I've traveled Italy in summer and then been in Switzerland when it's getting starting to get cooler in the Alps, and the fan just makes things super comfortable. Also, it's a complete game changer as far as condensation is concerned. Ideally, if you have one that can be set on reverse to be sucking air out, it's gonna function a little bit better, but as long as you've got airflow coming through, regulating the moisture in the van overnight, it's gonna make a huge difference. It's not really to do with your insulation per se, but it's really gonna help your condensation no matter what insulation you do choose. So keep that in mind. The third way to prevent condensation from forming is by raising the temperature of the surface that that moisture filled air is coming into contact with. And that is the typical role of insulation. As the cool of the night starts to come through and penetrate the metal van walls, it will hit your insulation and slowly become warmed before it reaches the inside of the van where it comes into contact with the moisture filled air and can possibly create condensation. With whichever insulation you choose, whether it's XPS or spray foam, sheep's wool or the flexible foam, what's really important is that you create seals so that there is no airflow getting behind your insulation and coming into contact with the metal walls. It's definitely not just about how much material or the volume of insulation you have in your wall, but more so how well that insulation seals off the outside panels. So now that we have a little bit more of an understanding of condensation and how that's gonna work and interact with your insulation, I'll run through a couple of the options that you have for material that you might consider, bearing in mind that this video is specifically for a high X or a smaller van. First of all, the best material that you can use to insulate a camper van is spray foam insulation. It's got the best thermal properties or what's known as an R value and it actually, because it fills the entire void of your walls, it actually creates a vapor barrier as well because it doesn't allow any air to get in any holes and sort of flow behind your wall. Whereas all the other options will allow some degree of airflow still. As good as it is, typically you don't see spray foam insulation in smaller vans because it's not very cost effective. In Australia in particular, it's really hard to get a hold of as well. If you have to get like a semi-industrial 
container of the stuff. Finally, I think spray foam can be a little bit intimidating if you haven't done it before. It's just not something that many people have experience with, so it's much more comfortable to go with one of the other options. But like I said, for in a smaller van, it is probably expensive and quite difficult to get your hands on. So then we move on to the next best material, thermally speaking, with the next best R value, and that is XPS, or extruded polystyrene. XPS actually has a similar R value to the closed cell flexible foam. The reason it's better as an insulator for your van is because it typically comes in much thicker boards. It's easy to source XPS from 25 to 50 mil thick, whereas the flexible foam typically comes in 10 mil thick uh, rolls. And the way that R values work when everybody's trying to make comparisons with which materials are more effective as an insulator is always relative to the thickness. So a 10 millimeter thick flexible foam as compared to a 25 millimeter thick XPS board, the XPS board is gonna be 2.5 times more effective because they have a similar R value, but the XPS is just thicker. So XPS you see a lot in larger vans. The reason you don't see it in smaller vans is because it's quite an involved installation process. Because they come in rigid boards, um, it's quite involved to cut around all the curves and bends of the van and make sure that everything fits really nicely. And like I said before, you really have to make sure that all the boards are pressed hard on the surfaces of the van to make sure there's no airflow getting behind those boards, otherwise there could be big problems. So it's a fantastic insulator, nice and cheap, but it's a very involved process installing it. So I guess a lot of people like myself just find that it's not quite worth that extra mile of effort when it's a smaller van anyway. You're probably not going to be living in it um, or spending you know, months on end on in it anyway. So that brings us to the next material, which I personally have gone with, which is the flexible closed cell foam with a self-adhesive backing. In comparison to the XPS, like I said, has a similar R value, but it is a much thinner product, meaning it offers far less insulation. Where it stands out is, unlike the XPS, flexible closed cell foam is incredibly easy to install. With the self-adhesive backing on the end, it's literally peel and stick, which makes it great for beginners, or if you're not quite sure of yourself, really hassle-free to install compared to all the other options here. I don't mind that it's thicker. The van isn't gonna be as well insulated. In a smaller van, I find that that's fine. Like I said, last year I was traveling through Italy in summer and Switzerland later on in the year and in both cases it was fine with the flexible closed cell foam. In Europe actually, Armaflex is by far the most popular insulation. In Australia on carbuilders.com it's also a really good option. It's by far the easiest insulation to install of all the options. It gets the job done thermally speaking. And third, and most importantly, it's the most user-friendly in regards to how it deals with condensation. With the self-adhesive backing, and because it physically sticks onto the external metal panel, it means there's no chance of any airflow getting in and around and coming into contact with that cold surface. So it's the most user-friendly as well. It's really good across the board, I find. The last option that I'll talk about today is a natural sheep's wool. Sheep's wool is a great option that a lot of people go with because it's the only one on the list that's environmentally sustainable. As far as thermal properties go, natural sheep's wool has an R value of 3.8 as compared to flexible closed cell foam and XPS which have R values between 4 to 5 depending on which website you're looking at. So it's around 5% less thermally effective which for most people is more than acceptable for a sustainable option. With some spray adhesive, it's also a really easy install and it's great working with a natural product. I do really like the natural sheep's wool as an option. The only reason I went with the flexible closed cell foam over the sheep's wool is because sheep's wool has a very different way of dealing with condensation than any of the other options on the list. First of all, natural sheep's wool acts as a great insulator. When there is an inevitable build up of moisture the wool as a natural fiber is able to absorb that moisture and then release it during the day essentially breathing with the van which is a really nice touch and if you read their websites on Havelock wool they definitely say it's the best way to deal with condensation personally I'm a little bit more comfortable with like I said the way that the flexible foam sticks to that wall 
and it really stops any air from coming into contact with the outside metal. So there you have it, the theory on insulating a small camper van. It's a really important step for your conversion. <laughs> Hopefully you picked up a couple of nuggets of information there that you can use moving forward and you're pretty confident on what material you want to use. If you have any questions at all, fire away. I'd love to be able to help out and answer any that I can. Thanks for watching.